What have we come to as we sit here in Trinity Church or watch from home? We've come to a building where people have gathered Sunday by Sunday for 172 years, almost 9,000 Sundays. And sometimes the singing has been good and the hymns uplifting, the preacher powerful, and sometimes perhaps the service has been disappointing. The hymns or the hymn tunes difficult, the prayers over long, the singing half-hearted. Yet 9,000 times of worship and at the heart, not a building, not even a group of people, but this awesome God, the mystery, the living God, the one and only who is worthy of worship. Political leaders come and go, wealth fades, athletic prowess diminishes, the world changes, but at the heart of life, one God, the living God, the one and only one worthy of worship. And according to our reading today, that God was encountered, encountered long ago in the story of a people traveling through a wilderness, slaves who had found freedom and had found their dignity through the mystery we call God. The one who was revealed to Moses as I am who I am. What a glorious name for God. I am who I am. Or even I was who I was, I will be who I will be. I am who I am. The great I am. And Mount Sinai and the giving of the law for the people of Israel was an awesome moment. For this mystery, this I am, who I am, invited those former slaves to commit themselves to a new way of living, loving God and loving their neighbour. And this awe at this glorious God, this mystery, turned at times to fear. And the writer to the Hebrews talks of Moses trembling with fear. And the the Old Testament again and again speaks of fear of God being the beginning of all wisdom. We use that word fear within our hymn, Be Still for the Presence of the Lord. And of course fear can be a very destructive emotion. But I think where reverence and awe is the sort of primary meaning, then that fear of God takes makes more sense. This is an awesome God. And Hebrews is not diminishing that. The writer is not diminishing the awesome nature of God. In fact, the writer is elevating that awesome nature higher and higher. He tells the Christians he's writing to, you have come to Mount Zion, to the city of the living God, to the heavenly Jerusalem, you have come to thousands upon thousands of angels in joyful assembly. You have come to the church of the firstborn, whose names are written in heaven. You have come to God, the judge of all. You have come to Jesus, the mediator of a new covenant. This is what we have come to. And this is what our forebears came to as they gathered here over those 9,000 Sundays. We come to 
to an awesome God. Not just in a building, but whenever we come in prayer, in worship, in service. This is what's happening. We're gathering to worship. Whether we're meeting here or watching from home, whether we're walking in the countryside or meeting with friends, as we come to God, we come to an awesome God. So today we're not coming to a building, we're not coming to a club meeting, we're coming to worship the judge and the saviour of all who is met in Jesus. And we come in the company of the angels of heaven and the saints of history, the generations who have come and gone before us. And we're united with them in this mystery we call worship, in this mystery we call prayer, as we worship the God who created us and them and all life. At times we've lost that sense of awe and wonder, that sense of the otherness of God. Yet paradoxically, this God who is other, who is awesome, is also the God who is closer than our very breath, who through his Spirit is at work even within us. Church life at times gets caught up in the busyness of life and the business of life. The ordinary things of rotors and money and drinking tea and chatting about the latest news. And that's fine because God is concerned about the details of our lives, the ordinary things, flesh and blood. But it's never enough we have to allow that room for the extraordinary, the wonder of it all, above all, the wonder of God. And the passage we heard from Hebrews today ends with these assuring words, therefore since we are receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken, let us be thankful let us be thankful. We give thanks to our awesome God. Thanksgiving is at the heart of Christian life. And we come to give thanks week by week for the ordinary blessings and the extraordinary grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. And thanksgiving flows into worship, into adoration and praise. Worship, that activity which William Temple described as the most selfless act we as human beings are capable, capable of. And so an antidote to our self-centeredness. Worship takes us out of ourselves, out of all our plans and our problems and our thinking and our needs and our wants and our desires takes us out into this reality, into this wonder, into this mystery. We lose ourselves and so in the losing we find ourselves in proper relationship to this God who alone is worthy of worship. And so the letter continues. So worship God acceptably with reverence and awe, for our God is a consuming fire. A consuming fire. And that could be terrifying. We come back, that, back to that word fear. But what kind of consuming fire? It is the consuming fire of love, that light that blazes and wipes away the hatred, the selfishness, the compromise, 
the corruption. What is the worship that God accepts today? It is worship of the heart deep within us, but it is also worship that flows into action, into the way that we live day by day, hour by hour. God is a consuming fire, but not of destruction, but of infinite love. And John Wesley experienced that far of love when he heard a reading from Romans and his heart was strangely warmed. So it's a lovely phrase that Methodists enjoy to this day. Strangely warmed. May we be strangely warmed. After all the heat of the recent weeks, may we be strangely warmed within us by that consuming fire of God's love. And John's brother Charles wrote that great hymn that we'll end the service today by singing, Love divine, all loves excelling, joy of heaven to earth come down, fix in us thy humble dwelling, all thy faithful mercies crown. Jesus, thou art all compassion, pure unbounded love thou art. Visit us with thy salvation. Enter every trembling heart. Finish then thy new creation. Pure and spotless let us be. Let us see thy great salvation perfectly restored in thee. Change from glory into glory. Till in heaven we take our place. Till we cast our crowns before thee lost in wonder, love, and praise. Let's keep a moment of quiet as we offer that wonder, love, and praise to our awesome God.